Sorry, I don't really have time for an intro, but I'm reading Wings of Fire, The Dragon Hat Prophecy by 2ET Sutherland. Let's begin. Um, also, I haven't finished the first chapter yet, so that's, yeah. Okay. Why not, she said. If we can find a way out, why should we have to wait another two years? I'm ready to save the world now, aren't you? Clay wasn't sure he'd ever be ready to save the world. He figured the Talons of Peace would tell them that what they fig what they had to do. Only the three guardian dragons, Kestrel, Webs, and Dune, knew where the dragon nets were hidden. But there was a whole network of Talons out there getting ready for the prophecy. We can't stop the war by ourselves, he said. We wouldn't know where to start. Tsunami flapped her wings at him in, exager in exasperation, showering him with gold dr cold droplets. We can, too, stop the war on our own, she said. That's the whole point of the prophecy. Maybe in two years, Clay said. Maybe by then I'll have found my dangerous side. Maybe, th but maybe then I'll be the ferocious fighter Kestrel wants me to be. Maybe sooner, she said stubbornly. Just think about it, all right? Clay shifted his feet. All right, I'll think about it. At least that way he could stop arguing with her. Tsunami cocked her head. I hear dinner. The faint sound of dismayed mooing echoed up the time behind them. She pelt Clay cheerfully. Race you to the hall. She whirled and pounded away without waiting for a response. The torches in the battle room seemed dimmer, and cold water was seeping under Clay's scales. He fo Clay's scales, sorry. He folded his wings and swept his tail through the debris of the smashed rock column. Tsunami was crazy. The five dragonettes weren't ready to stop the war. They wouldn't even know how to survive on their own. Maybe Tsunami was brave and tough like a hero, but she, ugh. Maybe Tsunami was brave and tough like a hero should be. But Sunny and Glory and Starflight? Clay thought of all the things that might hurt them and wished he could give them his own scales and claws and teeth for extra protection. Besides, there was no way to escape the caves. The Talons of Peace had made sure of that. Still, part of him could, couldn't help wondering what, to, what it would be like to go home now instead of waiting another two years. Back to the marshes, to the swamps, to a whole tribe of mudwings who looked like him and thought like him back to his parents whoever they were what if they could go what if they could do it what if the dragonettes could escape and survive and save the world their own way chapter two clay swept the bones of dinner into the river with his tail they stripped white shapes bounce ah, they the stripped white shapes bounced away in the current fires flickered away the edges of the great central cave echoing echoing space yawned overhead dripping with stal with like huge white teeth this the cave dome was big enough for six for six full grown dragons to fit across with their wings extended the underground river flowed along one wall, muttering and gurgling as if they were plotting its own escape. Clay glanced at the two small sle sleeping caves that opened onto the hall, currently empty and wondering where the other dragonets had had gone while he was cleaning up. Aha! yelled a voice behind him. Clay threw his wings over his head. What I do? He yelped. I'm sorry, it was an accident. Or if it was the extra cow, Dune said I could have it because Webbs would be would be out late. I'm sorry. I could skip dinner tomorrow. A small snout poked his back between his wings. Calm down, silly, Sonny said. I wasn't a hawing at you. Oh, Clay smoothed his crest and twisted around to look at her. The smallest and last hatched of the dragonettes. A pale lizard tail was disappearing into her mouth. She grinned at him. What was my f that was my fierce hunting cry, she said. Did you like it? Wasn't it scary? Well, it was certainly surprising, he said. Lizards again? What's wrong with the cows? Blah, too heavy, she said. You look all serious. Just thinking. He was glad Kestrel and Dune couldn't read minds like Nightwing dragons. He hadn't been able to stop thinking about the idea of escape all through dinner. Clay lifted one of his wings and Sunny nestled in close to in cl uh, Sunny nestled in close to him. He could feel the warmth of her golden scales radiating along his side. Sunny was too small and the wrong color, tawny gold instead of sand pale like the most sand wings, but she gave off heat like the rest of her tribe. 
Dune says we should go. F uh, Dune says we should go study for an hour before bed. She said, "The others are in the study cave already." Dune, the main dragon who taught them survival skills, was a sandwing, and so was Sunny, more or less. There was, there was something not quite right about the little dragonette. Not only were her scales too golden, but her eyes were gray green instead of glittering black. Worst of all. Her tail curled into an ordinary point like the tails of most dragon tribes, instead of ending in the poisonous tail barb that was a Sandwind's most dangerous weapon. As Kestrel often said, Sunny was completely harmless, and what good was a harmless dragon? But her egg fit in the instructions of the prophecy, so she was their wings of sand. Whether the towns of peace liked it or not, of course there was no wings of rain in the prophecy at all. The dragonets has heard many times over about how glory was a last-minute substitute for the broken skywing egg. Kestrel and Dune called her a mistake and growled at her a lot. Nobody knew whether the prophecy could still happen with a rainwing instead of a skywing. But from what Clay knew of skywings, he was very glad that they had glory instead of another grumpy fire-breathing kestrel under the mountain. Besides, if anyone was likely to mess up the prophecy, it was him, not Glory or Sunny. Come on, Sunny said, flicking him with her tail. He followed her across the central cave, twisted stone... T Twisted stone tunnels led off in four directions, one of the battle arena, to one to the guardian's cave, one to the study hall, study room, and one to the outside world. The last one blocked with a boulder too big for any of the dragonets to move. Clay stopped and pushed against the rock with his soldier so, shoulder as he as they went by. He often tried to open it when the big dragons weren't ar weren't around. Some day. It would move when he did that. Maybe not a lot, but even a tiny shift would let him know he was finally getting close to full grown. He felt big. He was constantly bumping into things and accidentally knocking stuff over with his tail or his wings. Not today, he thought ruefully when the boulder didn't budge. Maybe tomorrow. He followed Sunny down the tunnel to the study room. His enormous feet and thick claws thumped and scraped alongside the stone floor. The Even though he lived under the rock, under the mountain his whole life it still hurt to walk on bare rock he was constantly stubbing his talons and they always ached by the end of the day tsunami was strutting around the study cave barking orders sunny and clay sat down by the entrance folding their wings back a breath of air drifted back from the hole to the roof far ahead the only window to the outside of the outside in any of the caves at night without the distant hint of sunlight the room felt colder and more hollow clay stretched up and sniffled and sniffed at the darkness that had fallen on the other side of the hole he thought it smelled like stars stars a map of Priera hung on the wall between the torches. Tsunami and Starflight loved staring at the map, trying to figure out where their hidden cave was. Starflight was pretty sure that they were somewhere under the claws of the clouds mountain. Sky Skywings preferred to live high among the peaks. So many could happen so anything could happen in the deep caves below without being noticed. All of this history is so confusing, Sunny murmured to Clay, swishing her tail back and forth. Why don't the three sides just sit down and talk out and end up to the roar? That would be great, Clay said. We could stop, then we could stop studying it. Sunny giggled. Stop that, Tsunami said bossingly, boss, bossily, stamping her feet at, the, at them. No whispering. Pay attention. I'm assigning parts. This is not pro proper studying, Starflight pointed out. His black nightwing scales made him nearly invisible in the dark shadows between the torches. He swept, he swept a few scrolls between his talons and began and began to neatly sort them into stacked triangles. Perhaps I should read to everyone instead. Dear moons, anything but that, Glory said from the ledge above them. Maybe later, when we're trying to fall asleep. Her long, delicate snout glowing emerald green with displeasure, resting on her front claws. Ripples of, uh, of arid 
iridescent blue shimmered across her scales, and tonight her tail was a swirl of vibrant purples. If it weren't for glory, Clay thought, none of them would know how many colors there were in the world. He wondered what it must be like in the rainforest, where there was a whole tribe of dragons that beautiful. Shush, Tsunami scolded. Now, obviously, I'd be the best queen. But let's make Sunny the queen, since she is a real sandwing. She bustled, bustled over and pushed Sunny into the center of the cave. Well, sort of, Glory muttered under her breath. Hiss! <laughs> Starflight flicked her tail with his tail. None of the dragonettes ever talked about why Sunny didn't look like a regular sandwing. Clay's guest, Clay's guess was that her egg had been taken from the sand too early. Maybe sandwings' eggs needed the sun and desert sand to keep them warm until hatching, or else they'd come out half baked and funny looking. Although personally, he thought Sunny looked just fine. Tsunami tapped her talons on the cave floor, studying her friends. Clay, you want to play the scavenger? It's hardly fair, Star Starflight pointed out. He's twice Sunny's size. A real scavenger would be smaller than her. According to the scroll over here, it says that scavengers have no scales, no wings, and no tail. And they walk on two legs, which sounds very unstable to me. I bet they fall over all the time. They like treasure nearly as much as dragons do. The squirrels say scavengers attack lone dragons and steal- Oh my gosh, we know! Glory snapped. We were all here for the fascinating lectures about them. We don't- Don't make me come down there and bite you, Starflight. I'd like to meet a real scavenger, Clay said. I'd rip its head off and eat it. He pounded his front claw, his front talons on the stone below him. I bet it would taste better than the mouthfuls of feathers Kestrel keeps bringing us. Poor hungry clay, Sunny teased. We're he when we're free, we'll go find a scavenger nest and eat all of them, Tsunami promised, nudging clay with one wing. Sunny blinked at her. When we're free? Oops, Tsunami and Clay exchanged glances. Sunny was sweet and trusting, and obviously terrible at keeping secrets. I mean, after we fulfill the prophecy, of course, Tsunami said. Clay, be the scavenger here. You can. This can be your claw. She swung her tail in an arc and smashed a stalagmite loose. Shards of rock flew across the cave, and the other dragonettes ducked. Um, spoiler alert, scavengers are humans. Anyway, Clay hefted the sharp rock spear in his claws and grinned wickedly at Sunny. Don't actually hurt me, she said nervously. Of course we won't, Tsunami said. We're just acting it out, and the rest of us will be the princesses. I'll be Burn, Glory, you be Blaze, and Starflight, you... Or sorry, Glory, you be Blister, and Starflight, you be Blaze. I'd had to be the princess last time, too, Starflight observed. I'm not sure I like this game. He stretched his wings and the scattered silver scales underneath, glittering like stars in the night sky. It's not a game. It's history, Tsunami said. And if we have had any other friends, we would pay... We would play it differently, but there are three sand dragon princesses, so you have to be one, so stop complaining. Starflight shrugged and settled back into the shadows, the way he always did when he couldn't win a fight. All right, go ahead, Tsunami said, hopping onto the ledge next to Glory. Um, Sunny said. She eyed Clay warringly. Right, here I go. La la la, Queen Oasis of the Sand Wings. I am so very important and uh, royal and stuff. Tsunami sighed. Glory and Starflight hid their smiles. I've been queen for ages and ages, Sunny went on. She strutted across the cave floor. No one dares challenge me for my throne. I'm the strongest sandwing queen who ever, who, uh, who ever lived. Don't forget the treasure, Tsunami hissed, pointing at the pile of loose rocks. Oh, right, Sunny said. It's probably because of all my treasure. I have so much treasure because I'm such an important queen. She swept the rocks across her and gathered them between her talons. Did someone say treasure? Clay bellowed, leaping out from behind a lar large rock formation. Tsunami yelped with fright. No, Tsunami called. You're not scared. You're, que you're Queen Oasis, the big bad queen of the sand dragons. Right, Sunny said. Rarg, what is a tiny scavenger doing in the kingdom of sand? I'm not afraid of any tiny scavengers. I shall go out there and eat it in one bite. Oh, looks like I'm running out of time. Um, I love you all so much, and goodbye. I'll have a part two of this.